It's homework time. Yes, happy, happy homework time is here again. Lesson eight. Let's go ahead and start out the right way. Jotting our names down. Whoa, that's a crazy M. At the top of the paper, I will put my name. You can go ahead and write your name even more neatly than I did. And then let's write today's date because anything worth doing is worth doing well. Amen and hallelujah. You write the actual date. So, don't get hung up on these names and situations in these word problems. We're starting right off with the word problem here. This is kind of fun stuff. I love this geometry. Jill, Cheyenne, and Barb, so we have three people, three people, okay, stood in the middle of the yard and faced the barn. So just take a quick look. Here's the yard. They're standing in the middle at the center point, and they're facing the barn, okay, great. Jill turned 90 degrees to the right, Cheyenne turned 180 degrees to the left, Barb turned 270 degrees to the left. Name the object that each girl is now facing. So I'll, uh, I'll probably switch colors here, so I'll start off with black for Jill. Okay, so Jill's facing the barn, she turns 90 degrees to the right. So you have to just imagine, and if you have to, or want to, just like turn and face that barn and say, I'm turning to the right. Okay, so Jill goes here. So that is Jill. I'll put a tiny little J. What is she facing now? The house. Beautiful. And let me grab another color. How about, oh, orange. Uh, for Cheyenne. Now she's also facing the barn. She turns 180 degrees to the left. So she turns 90 to the tree and another 90 to the fence. Or you can just think a 180 is turning to face behind you. Okay, a, com a complete turnaround, doing a 180. So here goes Cheyenne. She's facing the barn to start off, turns 90, turns 180. And now she's facing, that's sh as for Cheyenne, she's facing the fence. And how about for Barb, let's use some shade of blue. Oh, there's a nice little periwinkle. Uh, so Barb, again, starts off facing the barn, turns 270. So that's three quarter turns, right? 90, 90, 90, one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. So she goes from barn to tree to fence to house. And when we draw the arrow, that will confirm it. So we can do it in our heads and then draw it out to uh, see that confirmation. So there's 90, 180, 270. And that is B for Barb, and she's facing the house now, okay? And it's, I noticed I did go to the left. All right, so Barb is facing the house. Beautiful. And so, you know, both Jill and Barb end up facing the house. Uh, Barb just got dizzier in the process. So Allison, whoever she is, I, I don't know if she's associated with the other three girls. Doesn't matter. She looked at the clock at the beginning of class and at the end of class. Now notice, this question has nothing to do really with time or elapsed time. We're looking at angles. So beginning of class and the end of class. How many degrees did the minute hand turn from the beginning of class until the end? And so now the minute hand is the longer hand. That's something we just got to be. I'm going to trace it over here. Okay, there's our minute hand. And then here it is again. It's aligned with the hour hand here, but that doesn't really matter. All we're really asking about is the minute hand. And notice it's in the same position. And we know which way a clock hand turns. It turns clockwise, <laughs> that's right, to the right. And so what it's done is it's gone all the way around. Now, how many degrees is all the way around? That's right, it's 360 degrees. That's how many degrees are in a circle, um, four quarter turns, 90, 180, 270, 360. Okay, so uh, we'll write a statement here. The minute hand 
turned 360 degrees, period. Beautiful. Nice job, Allison, watching the clock. Mm. All right, let's move on. All right, more word problems involving turning and directions. The snowboarder, the snowboarder, whoever he is. Yes, we all know that snowboarder, yes, with the red hair, yes. Went off a jump and did a 180, which means he turned 180 degrees. We call it skateboarding and snowboarding and such. We call it doing a 180 or BMXing. In which direction was the snowboarder facing when he landed? How do you know? So this is redraw right, all right? So here we go. So we're going to draw. There's our jump. So here's our snowboarder. <laughs> Might as well have a little fun here. Come on. So here he comes. And uh, let me just for who was here, uh, change colors. We'll go to orange. So he comes down and he's now here's the part so he's going to turn 180 degrees so that's an important point there he turns 180 now we can just draw a reference point here if we say okay he's going this way to start off and he turns 180 degrees he's facing backwards right 90 180 going all the way around would be a 360 and he'd be facing forward again. So he's facing backwards. Uh, and how do we know that? Because 180 degrees is the opposite direction, right? I know how to put it. Okay, so he, although it does not, yes, it does say he. Okay, it does specify it's a male. Um, he is facing back or backwards, which probably isn't the safest way. He should turn his head at least. Uh, when he lands, and how do we know this? Because 180, I'll say A, 180 degree turn is how shall we put this? Because a 180, de turn, a 180 degree turn is, okay, turning back. <laughs> and in our illustration here also helps with that explanation, okay, if my words are inadequate. As she drove, number four, down the icy road. Whoa, be careful, Mrs. Campbell. She slammed on her brakes, which is the worst thing you can do. On an icy road, you pump the brakes. Everyone knows that. Her car did a 360, unlike the snowboarder. Explain what happened to Mrs. Campbell's car. Okay, so we read, let's draw. So uh, we're going to do a bird's eye view of the car. So there's the icy road. Here's her car. And although you wouldn't be able to see them from the bird's eye view, I'm just going to indicate four tires. So she's coming down the icy road. Yeah, let's have a little fun here. And then she turns, she does a 360, and it doesn't matter which direction we draw this in, um, because the whole world's just spinning as far as Miss Campbell's uh, concerned. And I'm going to put a windshield here too, so we can see there's the front of the car. She's going this way down the icy road. When she turns 360 degrees, there's 90 180, 270, 360. So her car does a complete turnaround. Do you see that? So the front of the car, a quarter of the way through, will be facing this way, and then facing this way, and then facing this way, and then ends up right back where she started. Okay, so Mrs. Campbell, and by the way, I've done this. I must admit, Mrs. Campbell's car did a complete turn and ended up 
facing down the icy road. Let's have a little fun, shall we? Comma. The same direction she started in. Okay. So be careful, Miss Campbell. Hey, let's look at the next few. And number five, Jonah. Fine fellow that he has turned the knob of the stove two quarter turns. Draw a picture showing the position of the knob after he turned it. Well, let me uh, go to my little favorite orange here. And on this one, what I want to do to show you how this works is I'm going to divide the circle into quarters to show two quarter turns. So there's one quarter turn, and then here is a second quarter turn. So we see one quarter turn, second quarter turn. So where is that knob after he's done it? And since they started in blue, I'll go with blue also. Yeah, it's facing straight down. We can see that. And this is, by the way, exactly the kind of question you're going to see on standardized tests. You know, with, uh, there'll be multiple choice, say, with four choices of what the, uh, the knob would look like. Okay, so there we go. Uh, now let's look at Betsy. She and Jonah are good friends. While he's turning the stove on, she's clipping coupons. She used her scissors to cut out a coupon from the newspaper. How many total quarter turns will she need to rotate the paper in order to cut out the entire coupon? Well, let's look. So she's starting in this direction, right? There's the scissors. So here's one turn, one quarter turn. There's another second quarter turn and a third quarter turn. Now, does she need to turn when she gets here? Well, I'd say no, because she's already cut this dotted line here. She's already cut this line. So when she reaches this point here, she's done turning. She does not need to turn. See, so turns, there's one, two, three quarter turns. So we'll give a statement here. She will need to rotate the paper three quarter turns. And you may see this one on tests as well. Usually they'll, they'll give you like a map grid and they'll say, well, how many turns do you have to take to get back to where you started? And so think about it, if you're driving the car and you take a, take a right, you take another right, and you take another right, you're headed right back to where you started. Now, if you want to be in your original position, you would then need to take a fourth quarter turn, but in the case of cutting up the coupon, just, or just returning to that starting point, that three quarter turns will get you back where you started. We're almost done, man. Let's wrap this bad boy up. And how many quarter turns does the picture need to be rotated in order for it to be upright? And notice that the direction won't matter here because it's upside down and we're trying to make it upright. So, and pay attention as well to the question itself. So quarter turns are what we're talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and write over Mr. Doggy here, draw quarters. Okay, so we're starting off facing this way. So when I turn it one quarter, it'll be sideways. And so I will need to turn it a second quarter in order to get it upright. And just to point out the obvious here, if I went in the other direction, it would be one quarter and two quarters. It's two quarter turns in whichever direction you go. So the picture is redraw right, right? We read, we, we drew those arrows and stuff, right? And now we're going to write. Write a statement. Don't be lazy. Don't just write two. The picture, I can spell, uh, needs to be rotated two quarter turns. And if you want to be a overachiever, 
join the Overachiever Anonymous Club, you can uh, put in parentheses here, hey, that's 180 degrees, isn't it? All right, David, fine fellow that he is, is facing north. He turned 180 degrees to the right and then 270 degrees to the left, got dizzy and fell down and threw up on his shoes. In which direction is he now facing? Okay, why David is doing this and why we care, I really don't know. But hey, we'll go with it. Um, and again, this is, I have to point out, exactly the kind of question you're going to see on these tests. They love this stuff on tests. So he's north. So he goes 180 to the right. Okay, so 90, 180. That brings him here. And now he's going to go to the left. So you have to imagine yourself, we're facing south now. So left is going back the way we came, back towards east, right? Going 270, which we now know pretty well that that's three quarters turn, right? So 90, 180, 270. And this is where he ends up is facing west. So we read, we drew, let's write. David is now facing west. And when you're re uh, referring to the cardinal directions, you do capitalize that. Isn't that great? Can you imagine it? We did it. This is nothing like drawing all those uh, blasted uh, place value discs. This is fun stuff. All right. So uh, you did it. You completed another homework time. And I'll see you again next time. It is once again homework time. Yeah.